next session is from Ramid uh, hands has that testing dot com. I had to pronounce it properly. Testing. Is there any particular reason why you have it named that way, Ramit? Are you there? Yes, I am very much. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Uh, let me see if so I can see. AI applications. That's why you see AI within the test and will oh, become wonderful. testing. Perfect. Uh, I don't see you though. If you don't mind, you could just promote yourself on the video yes, and we yes, can yes. start with your I'm with wonderful. You. Sorry. Excellent. I hope I'm visible now. Yes. Hello, everyone. Namaskar. Where are you are from? What time you are in? Namaskar is a universal way of, you know, greeting people. Namaste, Namaskar. So wherever you are from, welcome. The stage is yours oh. now. Lalit, you'll have to help me. Uh, because as we have discussed, um, guys, my uh, session probably uh, is the only session where uh, you are going to get involved. My session success depends on you. So first, let us see why we are here. You know, uh, very, very important to understand why we are here. So we are here probably because it's a weekend. You have never attended a conference. Uh, there's a lot of buzz about speakers, lots of big names from industry or manager has told you to to attend whatever the reason understand actually why you are here why you are <clears throat> spending this weekend uh, listening to different people who are experts from their areas uh, make sure that you are learning make sure that you become a better tester when you move away from this conference make sure that you have learned at least three things in these two days that you will implement and make sure that you are having fun i understand it's a virtual thing uh, i am a kind of guy who is who is not very comfortable talking to my own computer, <laughs> but then that is how things are changing. So uh, uh, make sure that you're having fun, ask questions, be involved. And here is one chance where uh, you guys can be involved right from the start. So what are we going to do here? I have created few, uh, not just created, some of them are created, some of them I have found, some of them uh, is you know the work that I have done throughout the years and you know, uh, listen to different people. So there are a lot of riddles or puzzles that I have, you know, uh, uh, got here for you guys. Uh, your job is to just answer them without using internet, of course. Don't don't go to internet. Try to answer them. There is no point for finding a right answer. There is no negative marking for a wrong answer. And what we are going to do is as soon as we uh, we find a right answer or when the time is done, which can be between 10 seconds to two minutes for every riddle or puzzle. Uh, you will uh, you will be shown the answer. Plus, we will also talk about some testing aspect, you know, related to what we have done. Ready, guys? How you will answer? Uh, since we all are muted and only few of us can speak, uh, I think you can use chat window to answer, and Lulit can help me in reading those answers very quickly. So let's start very quickly. Simple question: What is the first thing? You do when you wake up, the timer has started. 10 seconds is all you have. Yes. Okay. You have given me the toughest job of my hosting career. I got <laughs> to read the comments while they're still running. Okay. <laughs> so what are, what are the common answers you are getting? Read Prayer, any of them. Opening eyes. Mm -hmm. Check the time. Somebody okay. wrote Twitter, awesome. So we have people like me okay. checking Twitter. Okay. <laughs> so, so Lalit, the, the fun here is that, you know, uh, one of the things that people do when they get up is the first thing they do is they open up their eyes. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So what should we learn from this question? The learning is that a tester should always give attention to details, even if it is the most minute uh, you know, minute detailing that you are, you know, looking at uh, detailing is a, a, a very, very important factor when it comes to be comes to be a, a good tester or be a successful tester. And next question is not that easy. Okay. So here you go. And you have one minute. So I'm keeping a watch guys. Okay, I'll keep telling you.
you can write your answers in the chat as left top right top left bottom right bottom as per your screen and Fifteen seconds left. Okay, guys, we are done. So, um, Lalita, I'll make your life easy. I am looking at the answers right now uh, through my chat, so you know that will make your life easy. See, uh, a lot of you who have given this answer. i see very few people who have tried anything in float numbers i just see uh, one answer from somebody called manali good job done manali you see uh, she has tried to find this answer in floating numbers uh, typically when i will show you such kind of question it is obvious that you will try to see 4 plus 4 is 8 or you know 3 plus 3 is 6 and all that whereas um, if you look at the answer the answer is simple it is this and what is the learning you get out of it so if you want to see the learning when we look at a problem we create our imaginary boundaries around that problem we think of a problem to be solved in only one way and we don't try to find out that there can be an easier way to look at the same problem these imaginary boundaries that testers create around themselves is where Uh, is the first sign of a problem so when you are solving any problem when you are looking at a testing problem or a testing challenge in your organization in the work that you are doing or anything in life for that matter look at if there are any imaginary boundaries that you have created around yourself try to break them try to see them in a different way and believe me you will be a better tester let's keep going forward you have 30 seconds your time starts now Okay guys so i have given you the answer because i got some quick correct answers here one was very quick was from jayesh another was from vikram then uh, wasim was also able to give me a right answer somebody has given me 516 which is not correct my friends if i remove please understand if i remove this first three parts of the question what will be your answer if i remove 1 plus 2 equal to 21 if i remove 2 plus 3 equal to 39 if i remove 3 plus 4 is equal to 44 what will be your answer your answer will be then simply 9 whereas when i present some data when i present some data this data unnecessarily creates biases creates boundaries people start creating you know start having assumptions about you know the work that they are doing and that that starts creating problems in the testers mind so get out of these boundaries i'll keep repeating okay here is a very very interesting one you have one minute to answer this i think i have missed it Thirty seconds okay so i must congratulate you sab a lot of you are right right now involved in this uh uh i see a lot of different types of answers some of them correct because i can read them some of them uh, not correct so we are not bothered about being correct or not being correct uh, 
the answer here is that uh, there is no time that i'm talking about this ship as the tide will go up the ship will rise along with the water and when the tide goes down the ship will be going down along with the ship will not sink so there is no point a ladder or you know a step of a ladder going in the water or outside the water what this tells me <laughs> my friends this tells me that whenever we are doing any work domain knowledge is important and <laughs> no matter what we do you know for example i'm talking about that my organization is dealing with ai uh if i don't know ai if i don't know the models on which ai works if i don't know how the data is perceived in ai uh how the algorithm look at the data what is data cleaning and all that stuff i'll be probably not doing my work uh 100% so whatever work you are doing uh even if you are new to that domain uh my job is to tell you uh, that uh, please read about that domain a very wonderful thing that you know many years back somebody told me is that when you are when you are dealing with your developers for example it is a very good way that you write one single program even if that is you know uh, print your name on the screen that kind of program in the same language print that and then see how things are working around it and that will help you in understanding that how developers are looking at the problem and when you present your defects or present your uh, recommendations for the product uh, you will be able to speak to developers in the language they understand so it is important that we uh, get some kind of domain knowledge and domain doesn't only mean that you are you know if you are in a banking application you think of banking or if you are in a e-commerce application you think of e-commerce uh, if you are talking to a developer understand the domain a developer understands it. if you are talking to an architect understand his or her domain and so on and so forth so it is important that we gain this domain knowledge and which leads me to a very very interesting question which is a 10 second question very quickly in how many languages you can type in an ide let us say eclipse and i will start looking at the answers ah so uh a lot of you are you know answering me some of you are saying one language some of you are saying english some of you are saying as many languages as i know somebody is saying that the language is uh, that you have on the system somebody is asking me are you talking about programming languages uh, somebody is saying one so a lot of people are answering me my answer is very simple i can type in english and hindi two languages that i know plus these are the languages which are available on my keyboard uh, these are the keyboards available on my system uh, these are not programming languages and i can i can assure you that if you have a keyboard you can type in that particular language uh, on eclipse eclipse doesn't stops you from typing in that language uh, when i was writing this question uh, i was um, i actually typed in hindi on eclipse to just to make sure that you know i understand that what i'm asking is <laughs> correct or not uh, so now you are getting you know probably you are catching my psych up how i am asking questions so that is good that means we have reached a half a mark and uh, at half a mark i just wanted to tell you that start remembering what we have learned so far because i am going to give a twist because there are 10 questions in this and i am going to give a twist as we move forward let us move forward and see next question interested guys say a big yes on chat if you are interested to see the next question i want to see a lot of yes hey here we go so i'll take that as clapping you know i'll clap on behalf of everybody here that you guys are really liking it wow now this is nice you know this is the virtual way of you know telling your <laughs> telling your uh, speaker that hey you are liking it so <laughs> uh, you can try it with other speakers as well i was trying to see you know what is the what is the virtual way of you know uh uh clapping for somebody and uh, you can write claps or you can do anything you know you want to at least use this chat okay here we go the next question guys uh somebody has said we are enjoying this session thank you very much i am enjoying as well looking at all the answers so let us go to the next one 
very very interesting question i will give you some time on it though i have written i think 2 minutes or 2 and a half minutes i'll still give you some time uh, how much money you will take to clean all the windows in your city so i have put on the timer i have a hard stop that i've done for any question which is uh, 3 minutes basically uh, i'll give you that time think of it so somebody saying 10 rupees per window but uh, that will not tell me you know how much money uh, you will take because you have to give me a, a number for example you tell me i will take 10 billion dollars or somebody saying zero uh, somebody saying some no <laughs> one person is saying man i hate cleaning if i offer you 5 billion 10 billion i don't think you will hate uh, city has windows uh, so let us assume all the windows that your city has all the houses all the buildings uh, it is not a tricky question my friend i can assure you that depends what city how many windows it depends your city your windows my friend the the windows that your city has windows os no 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 the windows that are at your house or at your you know work location i would ask the number size location all the windows of your city my friend i won't okay covid <laughs> good one you are touching windows my friend you are cleaning them so you are helping covid patients <laughs> 1 per window i need an answer so here is the first answer that i got 1 billion dollars somebody had written before that somebody has written before that um, 10 million i don't know which uh, uh, unit of currency this guy was talking about uh, assuming this an international conference let us go with uh, dollars and a lot of people are answering it okay guys i think um, time to uh, time to discuss the answer now why this question now this is a question that i ask a lot in my interviews when i interview testers uh this question is not about getting an answer this is said to be a blind problem that people typically face whenever you face a blind problem which doesn't has any uh any answer that you know uh, suits it for example i ask you what is the time in your watch and you say 3 pm india time and i ask you to prove it i am blind these are the sort of questions which are blind so here the question is not being asked with the intention of finding an answer what i'm trying to find out here is what will be your questioning to clear the context here what will be the way you are going to uh, what will be the way you are going to ask the questions to clear your context for example when i asked this question in one of the interviews that i had with one of the testers i was hiring uh, she replied uh, are you talking about the windows that are generally on the buildings i said yes i am talking about that are you talking about all the windows or only the windows which people can see from outside so i said okay all the windows which people can see from outside um uh, then the person said uh, are you talking about the windows from both sides or only just the one side some person in another interview asked me why am i cleaning these windows i am not i am an it engineer i am not a guy who cleans windows so why i am cleaning these windows somebody asked me how much time i have to clean this windows because everything else will you know depend on finally uh, if if i say hey you only have time till tomorrow evening to clean all the windows uh, definitely this is not something that anybody can achieve uh, so uh, so there are a lot of questions or lot of you know uh, counter questions that you might need to ask now uh, take the same problem to your requirements to user stories especially in today's agile world where uh, when i started my career i was very very fortunate that i used to get a lot of requirement documents and big bunch of requirement documents but today requirements are uh, only a user story and believe me a user story doesn't do justice to the problem we are facing as testers we need answers to a lot of things so how you will clear the context or how you will uh, clear the problem that you are solving and one of the very wonderful ways of clearing the problem is that you start questioning to understand the context of uh, any problem and questioning is the key and uh, a very common mistake that people do with when they start questioning is that they move away from questioning uh, and they move away from the subject uh to give an analogy uh, somebody comes to my home not in the covid times before covid and once i i am hopeful that covid will be gone very soon and we will have the normal life restored uh 
assuming this uh, that somebody comes to my home and i ask that person will you like to have a cup of tea and this person says yes so my question should be around tea so i should ask will you like the tea with milk without milk would you like the tea with sugar without sugar these should be the questions on the subject rather than what people do is people start asking questions which have no contextual uh, you know they are they are not related with the context they they don't have a context relationship with the subject you are dealing with they will ask will you like to have tea in uh, in 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 a cup or in a cup and saucer would you like to have your cup in green color or would you like to have it in white color uh, somebody might say hey i don't need tea right now so why you don't need tea uh, do you don't drink tea so there can be there can be questions which can be around the subject remember you might ask these questions to your client and to other stakeholders within the system developers architects people don't uh, somebody uh, saying 100 ml or 150 ml tea believe me when i make tea at home i have never uh, had any way of you know checking uh, how much tea i am you know drinking at any given point of time <laughs> but thank you very much for that answer <laughs> so uh, so in short if you don't understand the context my friends and i think this word has spoken a lot about contextual way of testing my idea is always when i go in the conferences as a speaker my idea is to take you back to the basics and here you go so what is the way you can start asking questions you can start asking questions with a very simple and a very powerful technique called 5w and 1h and kipling uh, has thankfully given us a very beautiful poem and he says i keep six honest serving men they taught me all i know their names are what and why and when and how and where and how so this is something that you know i was discussing with rahul about these quizzes uh, yesterday and he told me about this beautiful thing that kipling has given and i think we all should remember it why what when where how how much whom whom for whom with uh, how many how many times how much money how much budget these are the sort of questions basic questions that we should always keep asking and if we don't have answers to these questions believe me uh, believe me we cannot really find the right context or we will really not find the right objective and when we don't have a clear objective my friends we will never be able to create business value out of our testing hey i quote it pradeep here great <laughs> okay very very interesting question now so i will wait for you guys to start uh so lot of people might be thinking what is this what is this blank bomba testing so i go back to uh, a yahoo forum discussion <laughs> uh, yahoo forum discussion many many years back we are i think pradeep was the one who started asking about black wamba and then you know uh, i remember i when pradeep and i were still not friends but we knew each other as as testers and we are very close friends now i i said that you know this technique is based on a cobra clutch technique which is uh, again <laughs> a manufacturing technique my friends there is nothing called black wamba testing for that matter you call it monkey testing you call it ad hoc testing you call it any other testing really doesn't matter my friends uh, stick to basic don't run behind fancy stuff don't run behind technical jargon you might look you know the the person who uses these technical jargons the person who uses this fancy stuff might look great for few minutes in a meeting hey let us do a digital detox in our organization everybody will be wow what is this digital detox somebody might say and say hey let us do a digital transformation Uh, and uh, do a delivery transformation based on the digital transformation that we are having and you might be like wow this guy knows a lot about testing and lot about other things but then after that uh, it's like soda it fizzes up and then it you know just fizzes out and you have nothing to learn after that focus on your core testing skills focus on test design techniques for example for example you are uh, 500 600 testers here listening to me right now how many of us know test design techniques beyond the basic stuff of equivalence partitioning and boundary values how many of us have used uh, techniques like decision tables state transition testing uh, 
domain testing, uh, pairwise testing, and so on and so forth. There are thousands of techniques which are available. So many techniques which are available. In testing, I know there are at least 25 to 30 test design techniques that anybody can use in their day-to-day -day life. How many of us have actually use these techniques? So my friends, please focus on your uh, core testing skills. Okay, two minutes question. Think hard, guys. Think hard. Think hard. Touch screen, unlocking the phone, call. Uh, some think, 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 my friends. Think. Wireless connectivity, internet. Uh, the good point here is that the the chat comments are going so fast that I cannot read a lot of them. They are they are going very very fast. I understand why Lalit was saying that I have given him a very tough job today. Uh, uh, sleep and wake up, uh, power on off, holding, communications, charging. Uh, I think we have got a lot of uh, lot of answers here. Uh, <laughs> somebody says these days WhatsApp. <laughs> yes, very very important. No doubt about it. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, I used once uh, my phone as a paperweight, uh, but it is not the most used functionality than my friend home button. Uh, some requirement can't adhere all. Okay, I have a requirement which will adhere everybody, my friend, whoever asked said this. Internet connection depends on person to person. No, the answer I'm going to give you doesn't depend on person to person. It is the most used functionality of a mobile phone. Okay, we will stop it here and let me give you the answer. A mobile's power system. If the mobile's power system is not working, that mobile is of no use to anybody. So the entire power system that I'm talking about, making sure that your mobile is powered by internal battery, making sure that there is a power system inside the mobile, not just the power button, but the power system that you have inside the mobile is the most used functionality, which includes, of course, charging a phone, which includes uh, discharging. Is that functionality or hardware though? Uh, it's a question, uh, uh, somebody saying it is a prerequisite. Uh, my answer to all these things is very simple. Have you created biases around you? It does not sound like functionality, I agree. Uh, Suhail says it doesn't sound like functionality. I agree, it doesn't sound like functionality, but it is a functionality, whether we like it or not. Switching off, switching on, power system of a mobile, go to a mobile tester. See, uh, there might be biases in you because you might be looking at, uh, when I ask the question, what is the most used functionality of a mobile, you might be biased with, because you are testing mobile apps on the mobile. So you want a prerequisite that for testing an app, your system, your mobile should be switched on and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you ask a OEM, yeah, or sorry, how I like, wish I would let you continue for the rest of the day. It's a very engaging session, uh, but it's a time for a question. Uh, okay. You don't mind? Quickly finish. Uh, I have, uh, I have uh, I have just one more slide to go after this. I think you know we will finish Absolutely. after that. Absolutely, please, please, please yeah. go on and put so, questions. So, guys, the idea is here that you know get out of your biases, see beyond users, uh, read a book called Six Thinking Hats by Edward D. Bono, and you should have uh, you should find that there are different perspectives to anything. This is a question uh, I will keep with you guys. Uh, I don't have a select channel, by the way, so uh, I'll keep this question and uh, keep it open for everybody. Uh, give me an answer to this. Now, it is not just two and a half minutes. Uh, it is something that you know you can give, you can, you can answer uh, as you go. And I think uh, with this question, I had 10 questions actually, um, uh, but uh, for the lack of time, let us stop here. I, I hope there are a few questions and answers that I can answer. Lalit, do you have any questions for me? Uh, yes, I, I would just say people can continue with the Slack channel for you. And if not, I recommend them to directly go on Twitter and uh, engage in discussion oh, where you I travel on hashtag. Good. Okay, perfect. Every speaker has okay. a Slack. Quick question. So, 
uh, what sources do you use for learning in test design technique? Do you have any recommendations? A lot of books. Boris Beiser has written beautiful books around test design techniques. Uh, there's, you know, uh, Kem Kenner and uh, Jerry Weinberg has written books. There are a lot of blogs which have been written. For example, there's a blog by Vipul Kocher. Uh, uh, Rahul Verma has written a lot about test design techniques. Pradeep has written a lot about his book, Buddha in Testing, about, you know, uh, it is not that it can be a formal technique all the time. There can be many techniques that you can use, something that you have learned from somewhere else and can use it in your testing day-to-day -day life. For example, the problems that you solve every day in your automation, uh, you can create a FAQ and that becomes a technique that people can follow. So it is not that, you know, it has to be always a formal technique. It can be formal or informal approaches, books, blogs, uh, videos, a lot of data available these days in the age of internet. And you can use all that information. But I will say, recommend that you should start with a book from Boris Beiser. Cool. Could you tweet about the book or let our audience know on the... Sure, I will uh, put it. Perfect. One question I would ask on behalf of the audience. So since yes. you brought a very interesting talk, uh, topic about asking contextual question and understanding the context properly, and that mm -hmm. your company is all about testing with AI, mm -hmm. how do you think your AI is handling this context properly? AI is still very new, Lalit. Uh, we are mm -hmm. still learning, you know. AI mm -hmm. is right now a child, and we are still learning uh, how AI is getting developed. So testing mm -hmm. AI in itself, you know, becomes very, very uh, difficult, uh, difficult. For example, you might would have heard about something called test oracle. Uh, where you know exactly what is going to happen in, in the future. AI mm -hmm. is one area where you don't know the future. So you don't know what will be your expected result. And that's mm -hmm. an oracle challenge that AI is facing today. So uh, to answer, I, I can you know speak on this for the next two, three days. But mm -hmm. <laughs> to cut it short, for example, there is something called metamorphic testing that we do with AI systems, which okay. we don't do in any other conventional uh, work that we have done so far. So, so AI itself creates challenges and then testing AI uh, creates multiple challenges around it. So, uh, so that is how, you know, we are dealing with the context, trying to understand what kind of test design technique will fit into there. It can be metamorphic testing. It can be linguistic analysis. It can be something else. I'll give you very one quick example, uh, 10 seconds example, and uh, you know, that will help you. So we were testing something where we were testing the, the pictures of, uh, uh, of walls, uh, and all the pictures had ice behind them. So the AI system recognized the wolf will have ice behind it. So the next time when we were testing it, we give a picture of wolf with, uh, with grass behind it. It didn't identify it as wolf. Because for AI system, it is not about the wolf and grass and ice. It is about, you know, reading those zeros and ones on the picture. And mm -hmm. AI system failed. So, so it's, it's very, very interesting idea to work with. And uh, it's the future. So, so that is where we are. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. We will talk more about it. And thank you so much for a very engaging talk. Uh, let's move on much. to the next step. Uh, for the questions that are asked about uh, slides, so we won't be able to share the slides, unfortunately, but there will be recordings available. And post-processing time, it will take around one week, eight to 10 days. And after that, everybody will be communicated for the same. Ramit, thank you once again. Let's catch up. Some thank you very time. much. My thank namaskar you. to everyone. Thank you. Bye.